Dremel's mission has always been to enrich people's lives by helping them to create fulfilling projects. And we've shown that through 85 years of making traditional rotary tools as well as other tools. And we're looking to take all of that experience and heritage and put it into a new product like the DigiLab laser cutter. Today, we're gonna to give Anna and Sarah from Tactile Craftworks a sneak peek of the Dremel DigiLab laser cutter. So welcome to Dremel. Thank you so much for having us. We're a handmade leather goods company in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. We make uh, journals and flasks and all sorts of small leather accessories that we laser etch with antique maps. What we're trying to do is really focus in on kind of the handcraft and the richness of the leather that is already inherent there and show that it, you can use the modern tool that really allows us to get that kind of detail that we never would be able to get by hand. The Dremel DigiLab laser cutter is really unique for the laser cutter market because it fills a gap between the industrial machines and the entry level machines. A lot of the industrial machines, they are pretty reliable, but not necessarily approachable. They're fairly expensive, fairly hard to get to know how to use. On the other end of the spectrum, we see entry level lasers. They generally tend to be more approachable, but we just don't feel that they've done enough testing and investigating as far as the safety and reliability of the machines is concerned. So we're really looking to be both approachable and reliable. One of the top priorities for the Dremel business is safety. And so as with all of our tools, we're working with UL, a third party agency that helps to look at products from an objective view, ensuring that our product is up to their standards. This is our Dremel DigiLab laser cutter. The first one is gonna contain the majority of your accessories. This one is going to have your quick start guide, your ethernet cords, two different tubes. These are to connect your hex box to your laser. You've got two black cords, air assist tubes, and this is the power cord for the hex box. The second box is wrapped in a reusable canvas bag. Inside, you've got one test piece of acrylic, which you can use to run your first job on and then the honeycomb aluminum plate. So this is um, used especially for cutting to help with ventilation so there's some space between the material and the bottom of the bed. Then the last piece is, of course, the laser itself. Always use two people to get the laser out. It is really heavy. We've put the straps from the bag around the laser to help you get it out of the box. It's clear just from going through the unboxing process and all of that that there's been so much thought put into mm -hmm. the customer and how somebody's going to approach it for the first time. There's one last box inside of the laser itself. This is where your hex box will be stored. This is great. It seems like it's going to be a much more mobile unit than some of the other pieces that we've used before. So let's show you where some of these things go. You're going to start with the power cord. Then you've got your two water tubes. The clear one is here and the blue one is here. And then the air assist tubes. And then the last thing is the ventilation tube. So we'll just put the clamp around the tube, put the tube onto the shroud. Once you turn it on again, it'll walk you through that initial setup to make sure you have everything plugged in properly. It'll go through the safety check. Perfect. So, great. so now that you guys are familiar with some of the different systems and how to get it all set up, we're gonna take you over to the Maker Lab where we have the Dremel DigiLab laser already set up and ready to go so you can get some hands-on time and play around with it. Awesome. Perfect. So I'm gonna walk you through some of my favorite features. This is the hex box. This essentially contains both the cooling for the tube as well as the air assist that blows out the flare-ups. So it's really conveniently sized. You will get continuous runtime with this laser regardless of how many hours you have it on. Nice. Next up on our list is our smart laser sensors. Our smart laser safety sensors monitor four different critical systems in the laser, and they're gonna let you know if they detect that anything is wrong before you start a job, so that you're protecting not only your machine, but also yourself. I think the coolest part of the system is that it's gonna give you a little tutorial if something is wrong. So if it detects that one of those sensors is not working properly, you can click on the little question mark bubble mm -hmm. and it'll walk you through how to diagnose those and fix them so you can get your machine back up and running. I like the idea of the on-the-spot troubleshooting and like instead of trying to remember where we put the manual and contacting customer yes, support, absolutely. just like having that right there. That seems really convenient. Yeah. 
Do the files get sent from the computer each time you cut, or are the files stored in the laser? So you have to always send the job from the computer, but mm -hmm. once it's sent, it will store the previous 30 jobs in job oh, history. Nice. So you can rerun jobs from the touchscreen without having to go back to the software nice. if you've run it previously. Another nice thing about that is that you get a little preview of the job. So you get a nice little peek of like what the job is, and oh, then you nice. have the chance to run the perimeter as well to see relatively where your job is going okay, to run. That's great. Perimeter test is essentially the laser is going to detect the boundaries of what you are engraving or cutting, and it's going to show you on the machine where that job is going to run. Because we pre-cut a lot of our pieces and mm -hmm. then we put them on to laser cut, that was one of the problems we had early on was that we really had to like line everything up and we had to make like tapes and jigs and stuff like that to make sure it was in the same place every time. But having the perimeter test, you can just check and be like, oh, there it is, okay, great. Yeah. We're starting to use more of our scrap material yeah. You know, there's strange sizes, so to be able to check everything to make sure that it's not, if we're not using a square piece of material, that Absolutely. we can, everything, you know, is going to cut well. So let's hop into our next feature, which I think is really useful. We have our camera feature, which is really great for products that are already finished that you want to add personalization to. You can use that camera to put the blank material in there and know exactly where it's at so you can get your file in the right place. The camera work is going to be so helpful for us because we do some customization for people sometimes like monogramming something. And usually what we're doing now is creating a brand new file and etching an entirely new piece every time we're doing that. And so if we can take one of our pieces and know exactly where we're going to be placing that monogram, making sure that everything is square, that's going to really speed things up for us a lot. So we've just put the skateboard into the laser. What we're going to do now is come over to import and use what we're calling camera capture. It's giving you a little reminder that you need to go ahead and place your material into the laser and try to get it close to the center of the laser bed. So it's going to go ahead and sure. capture that height. Then it's going to move around the bed and take nine different photos and then stitch those photos together to create one photo. The most useful feature for the camera is this um, ability to put a picture of your object in the background of the software. So the software is kind of unique in that it's hosted on the laser itself. This is really great for performance because you aren't reliant on the internet for the, the processing speed. If you're at the point where you're ready to bring in a file for the laser cutter, what you're going to do is you can use any design software as long as that software exports a PDF, a PNG, a JPEG, or an SVG. But what this our software is going to do is assume you either want to engrave or cut based on the file type you're bringing in. So for JPEG and PNG, it's going to assume engrave. For SVG, it's going to assume cut. And then for PDF, depending on whether it's a line file or an image file, mm -hmm. you can do either of them the two. You can either choose to import as you would sort of a traditional software program, import file. Mm -hmm. You can also drag it and drop it. This is a PDF, so you're, you're going to see that you get the option to either import an engrave, import a cut, or you can import both. We're just going to do engrave. So it'll pull that PDF in. Then you can see how much easier this is to align awesome. now that we have the picture in the background. That's awesome. Really <laughs> that I feel like fun. a lot of times we get requests to customize something that's already done. And so this would be like a really great way of doing that. None of our other lasers do this. This is awesome. So here you can see we've done a little work on simplifying these settings too. The most important one for engraving is depth. So this is essentially going to tell your laser how powerful you want it to be. As you mm -hmm. turn it up, mm -hmm. engraving is going to get both darker and deeper typically. You want to create a solid black engraving without generating too much smoke. Mm -hmm. You'll notice as you turn up the depth that you're going to create more and more smoke. And for most materials, that leaves kind of an undesirable stain around mm -hmm. the engraving. Mm -hmm. So you want to minimize that as much as possible. So I'll use your file as an example. <laughs> okay. Although you need to bring in different files for cut and engrave, mm -hmm. as long as you've exported them from the same workspace, they are by default going to fall on top of one another. Yeah. And once you get them into the software, you can run them as one job. It's just on import, oh, you need two different mm -hmm. files. Okay. So let's go ahead and bring in the luggage tag that you guys are looking to prototype. We'll start with the cut file for the front. We're going to import cut only. And then we're also going to bring in the logo, engrave only. 
And then you'll see that because we have exported this engraving of your logo from the same workspace, that when we import the engrave only, it's gonna go ahead and place that in exactly the right spot. That is really convenient. So then we can go ahead and bring in the other two pieces of the luggage tag, cut only, and the strap. So let's say you've gotten everything set here. And you have the flexibility also to rotate, to move, uh, to scale. Now I have a question. So leather is oftentimes not square. So it seems like we're gonna go off the edge here. Can we turn this whole thing so that we're printing along this way? Absolutely. You select all of it and then you can either go up to edit, rotate, or you can use the shortcuts that are built into the software as well. That's helpful for those pieces of leather that are not all, you know, uniform shape. So another nice feature we've built in is now that you have everything imported and where you want it, rather than going back and importing all of those pieces several times to create more than one of them, you can use what we're calling auto array. With just one click, you can see that you can fill up the entire bed. Oh, <laughs> nice. That's an incredibly useful feature. Right now we're having to recreate new files to make multiples like that. Our material that we're using is a really expensive one, and so any time that you're, that you're throwing out the smallest scrap of leather, that's money that you're not making in your business. And when you're at the scale that we're at, it's such an important thing to really get all of your money's mm -hmm. worth where you can. One of the hardest parts of laser, and I'm sure you guys are familiar with this, is knowing what settings to use whenever you're trying, especially a new material. Absolutely. So what we've done on our end is tested several different materials, some of which you can see here. So we want to identify at least a starting point for both engraving and cutting so that if you want to try a new material, you don't have to waste a ton of materials in getting the right settings. So you can see there's a lot of different materials that we will populate. Maybe for people like you who are using the same material often, you mm -hmm. can star your favorite material mm -hmm. and the software is going to remember that as your default material. In case maybe we've forgotten a material or the acrylic settings that we've given you don't necessarily work perfectly, you can then either create a copy of the Dremel materials and adjust the settings yourself, or mm -hmm. you can start completely from scratch. So you can put your own material in here. If I wanted to create a material for those blank skateboards, I can call it skateboard, bring in a little picture of a skateboard so I know what that material is, and then I can tell it what settings I want it to use for the skateboard material. So once I save it, then pull that material into my frequently used, and then you can see this drop down updates, and now I can use my skateboard material. We do primarily use leather, but we do different types and different thicknesses of leather, so the ability to like make our own settings and say this is the leather we use for our books, this is the leather we use for our mugs, this is the leather we use for our flasks, that's really convenient. You can still uh, edit kind of the settings within that even after yeah, the Yeah, you can. So this is just a starting point. If you choose to edit the settings from here, those are going to override the material settings. Right. I think having a starting point is so helpful. I think that when you first start out with the laser and it's intimidating and you've got it in your space and you want to be able to have a decent starting point without burning the place down and <laughs> without wasting your material. and it's great to be able to dial it in, but just to know where to start, to not have to yeah. spend all that time just with that experimentation. Absolutely. So next, we're gonna go ahead and place the material into the laser bed. We can go ahead and run the perimeter. So that's gonna show you roughly the boundaries. You can see that this leather piece isn't in perfectly straight, so we're gonna wanna just make sure that we get the file on leather piece. All we need to do now is just go ahead and send the job to the laser. It's generally a best practice to put the engraving first in case the cut piece falls through and then it's slightly out of focus. Mm -hmm. Sure. Send that over. Now it's going through the checklist. You need to accept a couple different reminders and warnings and then double click to start. Finish the job up, and then here are the pieces. Excellent. So you can see now with the leftover materials, you could easily place this back in, use mm -hmm. the camera to capture it, and then fit at least one or two other tags onto this scrap piece. 
I really like how it looks like there's really minimal smoke out on the edges. What's so nice, the precision you get from the laser cut, like you know your pieces are always gonna fit. I'm really excited to see what we can do with the Digilab laser cutter. I think we're gonna be able to use um, materials more efficiently and increase productivity. I think it's gonna be really cool. It is exciting. I think it's gonna be a big turning point for our business again. It's nice to hear that you think that you have some really unique uses for it. And I'm so glad that you guys were able to come today and get a sneak peek finally. And we're so excited to see what you guys do with this machine at Tactile. We've both been using Dremel tools for so long, and it's a company that we trust. It's tools that we trust. And so trying the DigiLab, like seeing everything in process now, implementing that into our studio is really going to be an exciting next step for us. I'm really excited to get the DigiLab laser cutter into our studio. I think it's going to help us use our materials better. I think it's going to really kind of ramp up productivity and uh, cut down on a lot of waste for us. This is a really exciting product for us because I think it's the first laser that's truly built for small businesses. So we've taken a really close look at people who come from a design background who are looking to take that next step and make a business out of something that's currently a hobby and built this machine around those kinds of needs. 